Hoem has just released a new smartphone gimbal, the Hoem iSteady V3, an all-in-one smartphone gimbal designed to make capturing smooth and professional looking videos easier than ever before. And this new gimbal has exciting features including upgraded AI tracking with better accuracy, a detachable remote control, something I haven't seen in other gimbals, and much more. And we'll explore some of these awesome features of the iSteady V3 and how you can use it to elevate your mobile videos for all your content creation needs. Now, full disclosure, this video is sponsored by Hoem, so I want to thank them for making this video possible. And I believe many of you will find this gimbal very useful, especially for those looking for an AI tracking feature that doesn't require a dedicated app. So hopefully by the end of this video, you will know more about this gimbal and how it can be useful for your content creation needs. So let's start with a quick overview of the iSteady V3 gimbal. Starting at the top, you have a detachable fill light slash AI tracker. You have a built-in phone clamp and the iSteady V3 is a three axis gimbal. So you have a roll, tilt and pan motor. It also comes with a built-in extension pole and below are various buttons which include a joystick, a mode and shutter button. You also have an indicator that shows the current gimbal mode, Bluetooth connection and battery life. You also have an up and down arrow button, which is used to control the zoom and roll. You'll also find a small side button, which works just like the trigger button on the back of the gimbal. And the reason for that is because you can actually detach the remote control. It will make more sense as we go through this video. You also have a USB-C charging port at the bottom of the remote control. On the gimbal to the side, you have the power button. Below is the USB-C charging port. And on the opposite side, you have a scroll wheel that controls the fill light. To the bottom you have a one quarter screw hole for attaching various accessories. Lastly you also have a built in tripod which you can pull out allowing you to place it on flat surfaces. Alright so let's now discuss the design and build quality. Now the gimbal comes in two colors white and black. Now, its design is actually similar to the DJI OM6 when looking at it side by side. It's very well made and feels premium when holding it. The gimbal also has an ergonomic design that allows easy access to all buttons with my thumb. It's foldable so you can easily fit it in your pocket. It is also smaller than the DJI OM6 as it comes with built-in mini tripod legs whereas the DJI OM6 has an external tripod for standing. I like how these tripod legs keep the gimbal steady making it great for time lapses. It also doesn't wobble too much unlike on the Insta360 Flow. Now the V3 weighs at 420 grams, still lightweight and about the same weight as most compact mobile gimbals. Unlike the Insta360 Flow or the DJI OM6, this mobile gimbal has a built-in spring clamp instead of a magnetic one and this provides better security and the max payload of the V3 is 300 grams and my iPhone 15 Pro Max weighs 221 grams so it really works great and I had no issues at all when operating with the gimbal. And you can also use this gimbal with a case. I tested it with my Sandmark case. I also tried attaching an external wide angle lens. However, the V3 struggled to balance it so I wouldn't recommend using head heavy third-party lenses, however you can easily attach a VND filter without any issues. The V3's battery life lasts up to 13 hours, which is more than enough. Now, depending on how you use it, if you use the fill light and the AI tracking, it will use more power. And the V3 also comes with a built-in extension rod. This is especially useful for vlogging and achieving creative angles. So let's look at how you can mount and balance your phone on this gimbal. And it's actually pretty straightforward. First, unfold the gimbal and then insert your phone with the camera pointing in the right direction. Direction. Now be sure to clamp your phone to the center and balance it so it doesn't tip on either side. This way it will use less power and extend the gimbal's battery life. Now once that's done, you can turn the gimbal on and you're ready to go. So let's examine the iCity V3's basic button function so that you can operate this gimbal in the best way. Now to turn on the gimbal, press the power button for three seconds. To set your gimbal to standby mode, double press the power button. 
Now, if you hold the trigger button, you will enter lock mode, which locks all motors and keeps the camera fixed at its position. Double pressing the trigger button will recenter your phone and triple pressing the trigger button will rotate the phone 180 degrees. To the left side, you can press the wheel for three seconds to turn on and off the fill light. Double pressing the wheel will change between cool, warm, and mixed temperatures. And if you want to increase or decrease the brightness, you can just turn the wheel. The fill light offers up to 10 levels of brightness. All right, so let's now check out the remote controller. As I mentioned, it is removable, so I can use it independently. And starting at the top, you can control the camera's direction using the joystick. Long pressing the joystick will power on and off the fill light. Double pressing the joystick will allow you to switch between the zoom and roll function. And the zoom function can be accessed through the Home Joy app. I can create a zoom or roll function by pressing the up or down arrow. Now the button to the side functions as a trigger button. So pressing it twice will recenter the camera, triple pressing it will rotate the camera and so on, which is quite amazing. With the mode button, I can switch between the gimbal modes by pressing it once. Double pressing the mode button will switch between landscape and portrait mode. Triple pressing it will automatically rotate the camera 180 degree for an inception effect. Below you have the record button. By pressing it once, you can start and stop recording. And this works with the default camera app as well. Now by pressing the record button twice, we'll switch between the photo and video mode inside the Home Joy app. Pressing it three times, we'll switch between the front and rear camera inside the Home Joy app. Pressing the record button for three seconds will turn the remote controller on and off. Now, as you can see, using the remote alone or with the Home Joy app gives you many options for controlling your camera in the ways that suits you best. Okay, so let's now discuss the key feature of the iSteady V3 that can help you create a better mobile content. Now we already discussed the first feature, which is the removable remote control. Then we have the improved AI tracking sensitivity and accuracy. And what is cool about this feature is that you can use the AI tracking with any app, whether you're live streaming, doing a video call, vlogging, or doing instructional videos, you can have the camera follow you automatically. And to activate it, first turn on the AI tracker. There is a switch to the side and a red light appears and the light flashes twice indicating that it's on. From here on, you can use the guesser control. Hold up the OK sign and the camera will start following you. You'll notice the light turning green indicating that the active track is now on. And the tracking does a very good job of following me even when doing fast movements. When going behind objects and reappearing in the frame again, the tracking will continue to follow me. And if I want to stop the tracking, I can simply hold up my hand. Another cool feature is switching between landscape and portrait mode by holding my thumbs up. And if I want to switch to landscape mode, I can turn my thumbs and it will do so. And to start and stop recording, I can hold up this sign. And this not only works with the Home Joy app, but also with the default camera app and even the Blackmagic camera app. Just be sure the gimbal is connected to your phone. Now, if you want to adjust your composition, you can do the double L sign, then position yourself where you want to be in the frame, hold up the double L sign again to lock that position. And once you start the tracking, it will keep you in that frame. And this is awesome for creating interesting compositions when filming yourself. So you don't always have to be right in the center. Then there is the built-in extension pole, which you might be familiar with on other mobile gimbals. And this allows for many creative shooting possibilities, such as getting low angled or high angled shots. It also makes it very convenient to vlog with it as I can extend the pole far enough and angle it to capture myself. And combining it with the AI tracker, built-in light and external mic, you have a perfect vlogging tool. All right, so I'm testing out the vlogging setup with the Home iSteady V3. I have the AI tracker enabled. As you can see, wherever I move, it keeps me in the center of the frame. I also have an external mic attached. That is the Rode Video Mic Me C. This way I get the best audio quality possible. And I'm recording on the default camera app. I also have the pole extended all the way. This way I can fit in more in the frame. So it works really well, um, as you can see. I think this is a great vlogging setup. And I think this is a good way to capture your travel adventures wherever you go and let the AI tracker do its thing.
The next key feature is the iCity 8.0 stabilization, which has been improved, but we will look at that in the performance section. So let's take a closer look at the home Joy app so that you can expand the gimbal's functionality. So download and open up the home Joy. Now, because I already have the app connected to my phone, it will bring me straight to the camera. And if you want to get back to the home screen, you can just select this house icon on the top left corner and it will do so. And to get back to the camera, just select the camera over here. Now, next to the house icon, you have video templates. So let's select that. And what's really cool about this is if you're a beginner, you can use these templates to get creative shot ideas. You can go through each shot and you'll see what type of shot it is, a close up, the camera movement, the shot size, the technique. Let's say I want to use this template. I'm going to select start. And what's really cool is that you have the actual shot up here and the behind the scenes down here. So you can basically copy those techniques. And I think it's a great practice for those who want to get this started. Then over here, you have the zoom focus toggle. So if I select it, it switches to focus. So by pressing the up arrow, it will shift the focus, which is cool. And if I select the zoom, I'll start zooming, but I don't think oh yeah, it works with the selfie camera. Then we have the flash, so you can use the flash on your phone. And then you have the beauty filter, which is only available in 4K 60 frames per second. Next up here, you have gesture control. Select that. And if you don't know what signs to make or you forgot them, just press the question mark. So with the peace sign, you can take a picture or start recording. And by holding up your palm, you can stop the recording. So I'm going to enable gesture control and I just want it to follow me. So if I hold up the peace sign, you'll see it will track my face and it will follow me. And you can see it does a really good job. It even redetects my face if I'm out of frame. And then to stop, I'm going to hold up my palm and it will do so. But you also have other options such as just shooting or if you want it to follow you and record the video, you can select the top one. Then to the right, we have a few indicators. So we got the Bluetooth connection. We got the gimbal mode that we're currently in. So it's pan, tilt, follow. We got the battery life of the gimbal and the battery life of my phone. Then over here, you can switch between the front and selfie camera. Then down here, you can switch between the lenses. So right now I'm using the selfie camera, but if I switch, I have more options. Over here, you have the record button and down here, the media. So if I select that, you can see all of the videos that I've recorded and also what's in my photo library. So right now the camera is set to auto, but you can switch that over here and set it to manual. And then you can dial in your ISO shutter and exposure value. In most cases for run and gun shooting, I leave it in auto, but if you want to, you know, shoot professionally, you will be able to set those parameters to your preference. And what's also cool down here, you can see your shooting parameters. So right now it's set to auto, shutter speed as what 130, ISO 304, and exposure valuation at zero. Next up, we have the resolution and frame rate. So I'm going to select that. And I always choose the highest resolution, which is a 4K. And then if I shoot in slow motion, I select the 60 frames per second. Or if I just record a talking head video, either 24 or 25 frames per second. Then below we have the tracker. Selecting that will give you two options. You can either track a subject. So right now it will follow me. Or you can also uh, track an object. So I'm going to select that. And then I can draw a box around the object and it will keep that object locked. Then below we have our gimbal settings. Starting at the top, we have photo size. Uh, I keep that in general. Then you can mirror the selfie camera. Then we have the rule of thirds. I've selected grid, which will divide the image into nine parts. 
and allows me to set my composition easily. Then we have centered auto shoot. I'm not sure exactly what that is. If you guys know, leave a comment. Then next up, we have white balance over here, which I do not recommend leaving it in auto. You either want to choose one of these presets. So if it's cloudy outside, you would choose the cloudy preset. Or what I like to do is choose customize at the very bottom. And this allows me to dial in the exact temperature. So you want to make the white look white and not any other color. You want to make it look as real like you see it right now. So this looks about right, 4,500 Kelvin, but for now, I'm just gonna leave it in auto, but don't leave it in auto if you're actually shooting. Then down here, you can also connect the Bluetooth mic. You can adjust the zoom speed. You can disable or enable the recording beep, and you can also enable a quick preview after shooting. So let's move on to the gimbal uh, parameter settings. So up here we have the operation mode, which I keep in pan, tilt and follow, but you can see all the modes here. And you even have a small explanation on what that mode does. Then we have the motor response, which I keep at medium. So depending on the type of phone you're using, um, you can change the sensitivity of the motors here. Then we have the startup shooting orientation. I've set that to landscape so that the AI tracker is at the top, as you can see see and if I switch that you'll see that the AI tracker is now at the bottom. Then below you have options for your joystick, um, which I leave how it is. Then you also have the roll adjustment. So if the camera is off, you can adjust it. You got the gimbal sound. Then you can also do an auto calibration in case you're, you're facing problems with your gimbal. You can also restore these settings and do a complete factory reset on the AI vision sensor. And below you'll find additional information about your gimbal and that's about it. To the right over here, you have different shooting modes. So we're currently at video mode, but you got a photo, you got panorama, you got time lapse. You can also do a time warp, which I think is basically a hyperlapse. And then you also got moments, which is similar to the video template we talked about at the beginning. Now, the difference between the moment and the video templates is that it will actually uh, stitch the videos together for you. And it will also create the camera movements as well. So the zoom, the rotation and all of that. So this is even a faster and easier way to create videos and upload them onto your social media. So there we have it. That was a quick overview of the Home Joy app. So let's talk about the performance of this gimbal. Specifically, let's look at some of the footage I've shot. Everything was shot on the default camera app in 4K, 25 frames per second. So no slow motion and without post stabilization. I also turned off the enhanced stabilization on the iPhone 15 Pro Max. This way you can see the real effect of this gimbal. So as you can see, the shots came out pretty steady and by adding post stabilization, you'll get even better results. You can see that I also use the ultra wide angle lens, which hasn't blocked the frame. Now, as for the gimbal modes, you have pan follow, pan and tilt follow, all lock, POV and auto inception. I typically like to shoot in pan and tilt follow as it gives me the most freedom and it also follows my movement in all direction while keeping the horizon leveled. Now the iSETI V3 also has a respectable controllable range, which I will display up here. Now overall, I'm quite happy with the performance. It's smooth and responsive and the footage turned out great even without post stabilization. Now the gimbal is priced at $129, which is fair considering its features, especially the AI tracking that doesn't require an app. Over the past few weeks, using the home iSTEADY V3 gimbal has been a great experience. I've been having 
having a lot of fun with the AI tracker and the removable remote. And the fact that the AI tracker is compatible with any app makes this gimbal extremely versatile. I personally don't use the dedicated apps that come with most gimbals. I prefer to use the ones that I'm familiar with, such as the default camera app or the Blackmagic camera app. And yeah, let me know what you guys think about this gimbal and if you would consider adding it to your mobile gear. Thank you so much guys for watching. I hope you find this video valuable. Keep it mobile and see you in the next video.